Hey y'all. I'm uh I'm a little smoked and needed a day to relax. And what better way to relax than to tear apart your bug out system and uh, put it back together again. So it's been a while since we've delved into some gear uh, and I am pulling some stuff from my system. So I'm going to spin this around and show you what I am going back with item by item by item. And uh, hopefully it'll give you guys some ideas and some thoughts about uh, what you have in your systems. So I'm just gonna spin this around and show you guys walk you through what I'm doing and why so okay so the bag itself is the Condor 72 hour bag in coyote tan and uh, I've got it facing away from me it has all the pockets this pocket down here and it's got a pocket here and it's got a pocket here and it's, yeah, it's got keys here. It's a pocket here with all the organizers. And then the main clamshell pocket and two side pockets. One thing I wish it had, but it doesn't, it has some really good handles here and here, but I wish it had a small molly field on the top end of the pack. This is the top, we're looking from the top down. I wish it had a small molly field on either side so that I could molly two uh, one quart GI canteens up here. I would love that, it doesn't. I'm sure I could rig something up, I just haven't yet. So inside, I've got two one liter smart water bottles and I've got two two and a half pound super chunk natural peanut butter. And this stuff is good. This is the Skippy Extra Crunchy. If you go over here and look at the Focus. Roasted peanuts, sugar, palm oil, salt. Good stuff. So, five pounds of food off the bat and two liters of water right here. Now, I have up here, these are some NIOSH masks with some gloves inside and some Tums or, you know, facsimile thereof. Uh, because I do get some pretty gnarly heartburn occasionally and these are just some like little drink mix packets and then up here I have um, a whole bunch of instant coffee this is basically all instant coffee packages and then there's uh, 10 granola bars in here as well stuffed along the back and a little thing of super glue and it has these mesh pockets with the zippers on the inside of the clamshell and uh, they're pretty good. I have not had any issues with the zippers on this bag. Um, the only issue I've had was that this right here got caught in the zipper but 30 seconds of yanking and tugging no problem and it, it didn't damage the bag so that's good. Uh, so to start with Food, a little bit of water, Admix, Tums, mask, and uh, lots of coffee and some granola bars for incidental calories. Okay, next is four pairs of socks, two pairs of wigwam, wool blend, uh, hiking socks, one pair of Carhartt, wool blend, um, boot socks, and one pair of Dickies cotton uh, spandex, whatever, stretchy boot socks, and foot powder. This stuff also works uh, for your nether regions, just saying. It gets extra tingly, but four pair of socks. Now my bug out is uh, max 200 miles, and so I'm gonna be heavy on food, I'm calorie carrying uh, all of my own calories and I'm gonna be heavy on socks and sustainment items you know water water purification water treatment 
because my goal is to get from point A to point B, not to hang out and see the scenes and smell the roses and, and all that. I'm just trying to move. I'm just trying to put miles underfoot. So four pair of socks and then actually on my outside, one of my outside packages or pockets, I have another pair of Dickies boot socks and inside here is a spare pair of uh, safety glasses. You can see that, right? No, of course you can't see it. They're in there. Uh, I'll pull those out. So there's the safety glasses, just kind of a smoked gray UV, just standard safety glasses for shielding your eyes from everything from the sun to debris and, you know, all the things. And I usually have a pair of these with me, but they're small, compact, lightweight, and cheap. And so I've got a spare pair inside these socks to keep them protected in here that rides in this outside pocket. Okay, and then for spare clothes, I've got a pair of uh, nylon cotton Carhartt uh, BDU style pants. Um, you know, they're like ballistic nylon. You can see the weave and uh, cargo pocket pants. They're pretty good, uh, they're pretty good. And this is a long sleeve tan colored uh, dicky shirt, just cotton that if I need it as an extra layer or to keep the sun off of me or whatever, it's there. Regular just cotton t-shirt just to have. And then a couple pairs of man panties. And that's all the clothes that I'm bringing. Um, just a one change of clothes. Now obviously I should have clothes on, I'm not gonna be bugging out, but again, you know, I'm not gonna be bugging out naked, but uh, again, this is not a leisure trip this is getting from point a to point b so uh, i want the least amount um, necessary to sustain me so i've got one change of clothes if i get wet i can get out of wet clothes get into these or if i need an extra layer i have them or if i have a clothing malfunction a la janet jackson at the super bowl i have something else to uh, amend my current situation with so extra pair of pants long sleeve shirt short sleeve shirt, man panties, four pair of socks is the clothing. So the clothing goes in this clear heavy duty plastic bag. Uh, a dry sack would work. I have a dry sack for this somewhere, uh, much like my poncho, which I think is at Squid's house. Um, I don't know where it is, <laughs> which is part of why you should police your gear. But I do have this uh, pack cover as well that rides with me that goes over the whole pack and it's like um, silicone impregnated nylon that uh, keeps the water off of it. And this was about 20 bucks on Amazon. It's a great little thing other than in the middle of the, of the pack cover, it's got this logo emblazoned on it. So that's kind of dumb, but whatever. So this keeps water off of my clothes, and this keeps water off of my pack. And the clothes live here in the top of the bag in the main clamshell compartment here. So the next thing that's gonna go in this side pocket right here is this uh, camp cup. It's about a 16, 18 ounce stainless steel camp cup. And it's got a little hand towel in there wrapped around this one liter uh, water bottle. Got this at the resale store for a dollar. And this is pretty much my cook kit out on the trail. And this goes right inside of there. It lives inside of there. And the reason that towel is there is it insulates the cup from the bottle so that it doesn't rattle around. It acts as a, um, pot holder for moving hot things off and on the fire and it's a hand towel if you got to wipe your hands wipe your uh, face whatever so I have that as well and I carry in this pouch in front just a little bit of this Purell um, I'm not crazy about this stuff for everyday use but out on the trail you know, if you're doing your business off the side of the trail and you get done and you need to freshen up, this helps. Having a little hand towel helps too. And speaking of doing your business, I carry toilet paper in here and 
a full pack of baby wipes for uh, the derriere as well as the armpits and nether regions for staying fresh. So water bottle lives in this side pocket and like I said my tarp cover lives in this side pocket as well. In this other side pocket I would typically have my poncho however it's not here it's at squid's house so thanks squid good job bro so in this compartment right here the super organized pocket um i don't use it for that i just put the stuff that i use regularly in there so here we have a sawyer mini and a water filter and some cheesecloth and a couple of squeeze bags, as well as the backwash syringe. 20 bucks or so at Walmart or Amazon or anywhere far superior to the Life Straw. Go watch the Life Straw equals death video on this channel. So I keep the Sawyer Mini in a gallon Ziploc, mostly to keep it all organized and it just tucks in there. So, and I've decided I'm going to not take my Katadyne hiker in this pack uh, just for weight and space I'm trying to cull weight which we will get to here in a minute but I've decided for 200 miles say max 20 days on the trail between I have enough water treatment for 21 days um, Aquamira water purification tablets which I also carry and I have the Sawyer, so I'm not taking the Katadyne. Uh, our socks with our shades in them, as we discussed previously, they go in here. Other honorable mentions are Shoe Goo, Shoe Repair and Protective Coating, also excellent fire starter and good for putting your shoes back together or repairing your pack or whatever. This stuff has a thousand and one uses. And it's part of the general repair kit that I run. And it lives in that pocket. Also part of that general repair kit is this. This is a combination, can I do it? Repair slash fishing kit. So some safety pins, some thread and subdued colors, a stringer, some split shots, some small weights, a rooster tail, a couple of bobbers, some leaders that have already got hooks on them, uh, some you know, rubber wort, worms, you know, just a small assortment of things to have for fishing, for incidental calories, if an opportunity presents itself, and also to affect repairs, because I have had a pack come, up, come apart on me while on the trail, and um, it's not fun. So having some needle and thread with you, is good so that lives in that pocket and then we have this is my mosquito net from the friendly Swede and uh, it's about 20 bucks on Amazon highly recommended it weighs nothing I mean it might weigh four ounces and it's you know you can squish it down pretty small and it lives in this pocket it's got a ridiculous shadow right there for whatever reason, I have, generally speaking, gloves with me. These are just some Walmart, no, not Walmart, Home Depot gloves, just to help keep you from tearing your hands up. Your hands are the number one way that you interact with the physical world. So if you can keep from tearing your hands up, do it. So this is a guy who works with his hands. I mean, we can just play the scar game we'll just look at this one finger one two three four five just on this one finger so having some gloves with you is always a good idea this is some high speed uh, prescription wound healing ointment this is a headlamp and it's just the regular Rayovac these are pretty good uh, white light you know high intensity low intensity and off and I have another one that's in my plate carrier that also has red light 
has red LEDs built into it, but this is my bug out bag headlamp that will allow me to work without uh, tying my hands up. So if not this, one like it. Fire kit. I've talked quite a bit about fire kits here. It's in a waterproof Plano box and it's basically just some stuff thrown in here to make fire with. So some compressed bar here, a tea light, some matches, a couple of Bic lighters, another tea light, some more matches, and then underneath of here is some napalm in a sack and some tinder. And so by and large, I can build a fire with what I can pick up off the ground in a Bic lighter. But if I had to have a little bit of help, I've got this kit to give me a little bit of help. Prescription meds, uh, these are uh, basically low grade back pain pills and muscle relaxers, which, you know, they are prescribed. I will not die without them, but they are nice to have, especially when carrying that on a bug out. And then this is a small gun cleaning and maintenance kit because a rifle and pistol are part of my bug out kit. So some three in one oil, you can also, um, is it ideal weapons lube? No, but it will prevent rust. And you can dress your knives with this as well. An oily rag in here, some brushes, some patches, and yeah, nothing special. Oh, and a screw. Uh, that helps for popping the pin out of the uh, bolt carrier group on a, an AR-15. So, little gun kit. I've got a toboggan here with some fake snuff, herbal snuff, tobacco free snuff. All y'all people tell me I'm going to get tobacco from chewing uh, nicotine. I know. That's why I don't chew nicotine anymore. I chew this junk and I'm weaning myself off of this as well. So, And so in addition, in addition to the boonie or uh, to the toboggan cap, I also carry a sun hat, a boonie hat, and this is just a Rothko, I think it's Rothko, no, it's proper, in uh, multi-cam, 7 tree quarter, big dome, and I usually keep this rolled up on the, and tucked into the outside uh, handle right here, because it's the first thing I throw on if I need to grab this pack, and there's lots of things you can do with this but the number one thing you should do with it is cover your dome all right so next is what i call my junk drawer i have uh, this little zippered uh, cotton duck pouch that has seen better days it used to hold first aid gear now it doesn't so this is my junk drawer and in this junk drawer kind of item by item we have four tarp clips for the uh, 10 by 12 brown tarp that's on this bag. That tarp is pre-strung with paracord already, but if I need these to affect shelter with, I have them. There are water treatment tablets and three small bottles of iodine for same. A bar of soap inside a box, three AA batteries, six AAA batteries for flashlights, fingernail clippers, toenail clippers, and tweezers um, just for splinters and maintaining your body on the trail. Five uh, disposable razor blades taped together with Gorilla Tape and I carry a razor knife as part of my EDC and this helps me keep a good edge on my EDC knife and I can use my razor knife for general cutting tasks if needed in an SHTF bug out scenario, whatever. A uh, indelible ink marker, AKA Sharpie, although this one's made by Milwaukee. A just regular Bic pen for writing things down, keeping you know notes in my journal or writing love letters. A sharpening stone, a coarse and fine grit sharpening stone and this also has you know, some little ceramic rods in there for honing or whatever. And these plates 
come off, these ceramic plates come off, and the, of course there's a little guide in there about how not to die at the end of the world, or whatever. But uh, it's a pretty good little sharpening stone for honing an existing edge. I would not want it to rework an edge, but to hone what you've already got, it does a pretty good job. It's got some weight to it though, it's probably about four ounces, but for what it is, it does a good job. Another hand towel um, for you know all the hand towel things. A little bit of coated wire for trap making if needed, but again, I'm really just trying to get from point A to point B. However, I have this, it takes up no space, it weighs pretty much nothing, so it's coming along for the ride. And then uh, a USB charger and an iPhone lightning cable, charger cables, and this little doohickey here that will plug into a 12 volt or a 120 volt receptacle uh, comes along with me because I don't know precisely how the end of the world as we know it is going to shake out so I may need this I may not but I have it it's there and there's been a couple times during you know rule of law everyday life where I've been like oh I need a charger bam got it so that is what's in the junk drawer and rather than trying to organize all this stuff individually I just throw it in this bag and I throw this bag in this bag good to go okay now trail food in addition to the granola bars in here we have five one pound packages of instant rice and I saved this I cut it out you know so I know how to microwave this stuff when I'm out there bugging out uh, no just the ratio right so it's one to one but just if I get frazzled and I need to remember how do I cook this stuff I have this with me I should probably write a love note on the back of that one to one dummy um, but I have five pounds of that rationed over ten days of bugging out that's a half pound of rice per day then I have two pounds of summer sausage and two 12 ounce packages of uh, pasteurized cheese calories now this stuff the cheese and the sausage you need to rotate regularly this stuff has a shelf life of about a year but I like to at least every six months rotate it in and out of the bag but good fat energy protein good fat you know and morale this uh, you can get a cup of this boiling up and cube up some of this and cube up some of this and put it in there and let it all kind of steam together and make you like a uh, beef summer sausage and green onion risotto on the trail mm-hmm it's really good stuff so it helps feed the machine and again gets you from point A to point B and I keep all of this in a dry sack which I have a hundred foot hank of paracord is as part of my system for no other reason than if I need to hang my food in a tree away from my campsite, I can. So that's something to consider as well. But I carry actual food with me and I am attempting to calorie, carry all of the calories I'm going to need on the trail uh, while bugging out because I really don't want to have to stop and try and forage or scavenge or hunt or fish or whatever. I want to be as wholly self-sufficient as I can to make the most time that I can. Okay, so again, we're dealing with the Condor 72-hour bag. It's a 50-liter bag, or about uh, just about 3,000 cubes, 3,038 cubes. So for most people, it's going to be plenty of bag, if not too much bag, for your bug out. For this 200-mile bug out that I need to affect. I've got a 50 liter bag. So if you have a 30 mile bug out, you probably don't need a 50 liter bag. Most of the space in this bag is taken up by food and clothing, what little clothing I have. So be very conscious of what you're taking with you. Now, bedroll style, 10 by 12 brown tarp, reflective on the other side, pre-tied with black military specification 
a paracord on the four corners and then inside the bag rolled up there is an 80 percent wool blanket as well as a tan cotton blanket like a jersey style blanket and that's basically just to get me up off the ground create a barrier in between me and the tarp uh, for condensations that I don't sweat to death and drown in a pool of my own sweat and that's my three season uh, summer sleep system three season sleep system right there is a wool blanket cotton blanket and a tarp and yeah that's it Should probably burn that off but you know whatever the bag does have these loops right down here see them I know it's dark for uh, passing the line through to tie your bedroll on or your sleep system or whatever you got so that's the bag and the sleep system on the side of the bag I've got the Artac 2 that's been discussed in length on this channel yeah, it's been well used, well abused, and well loved. So, if you want more clarification on this gigantic 17 and 3 quarter inch, quarter inch thick wilderness preparedness knife, you can check out the uh, Big Knife Works versus Axe video on this channel for bushcrafting but uh, I keep this strapped up to the outside of the pack on this far side over here. Focus. And that's what it looks like strapped to the outside of the pack. I run this cinch strap through the sheath and then this cinch strap over the top of the sheath. And I have just a little bit of tinder in here. Swipe left. I don't know, I've never tindered, but little tender package in there for if needed okay and last but not least super fast uh, quick overview if you want more clarification on this this is the condor, condor modular chest set you can look up the standalone video on this on this channel the condor modular chest set and I will go through it in great detail if you'd like to know precisely what you're looking at here but um, this is worn in conjunction with this and my EDC, which is a RAT3 fixed blade, a Glock 21C, a spare magazine, a lighter chapstick, and a handkerchief, and a double A flashlight. Okay, that's my EDC. And then as well as this. So the system, bug out system, is the chest rig, the rucksack, the rifle, and the EDC. Four things. So here we have your standard blowout kit, uh, tourniquet, Israeli wound dressing, combat gauze, um, hyphen chest seals, uh, a few odds and ends, so a five by nine, some four by fours, some curlex, shears, right? The Gerber strong arm, soldier knife for knife things, a Gerber multi-tool, here next to that a small carabiner I tend to hang my gloves here when I'm not using them when I'm not wearing them that's where I hang them because I am a collector of right-handed gloves and a loser of left-handed gloves so having a place to securely stow them that they stay together uh, behooves me this is my boo boo kit um, has all kinds of stuff in here there's an ace bandage some matches some uh, butterflies for closing wounds inside of here I've gone through this many times in other videos but there's um, moleskin and band-aids and just all the boo-boo things are in there that's my basic first aid kit so blowout kit for major trauma basic stuff maintenance right there are six magazines back here one two three four five six primary reloads are right here and right here if I was in a hostile environment I'd be walking around with this tab off so I could pop that out and get 30 rounds of 62 grain light AP rounds you know steel core rounds drop them in the gun I will tell you this 
as a caveat, I just blew through about three, well, almost 300 of these rounds this past weekend, and I found there's a lot of deformity on the casings. So, now these are once and or twice reloaded brass, so this is the IMI manufacturer 62 grain LAP round. Just be careful with it, because it did induce a total of five stoppages between two weapons over the course of 300 rounds. So the fact of the matter is, I'm probably going to shuck all of this out, use it for training ammo, and replace this with something that's a little bit more dependable. But there is six loaded 30 round magazines on here in conjunction with the one that will be on the rifle, in the rifle, at the time of bug out. In here, is a lens out of compass and a can of fake snuff, a face shield, and maps. In here is a map compass. This is the Condor, I think it's the MA34 general pouch. You got a map compass in here. It is tied to the pouch so that it can't be lost. And there's some granola bars in here. There is uh, some chem lights, civilian chem lights in here. Another small fire kit and uh, some paracord odds and ends. This is a basic survival kit. Line gear, the concept of line gear. That if I got separated from this, I have this and I can get by. <laughs> in light of that uh, being separated and having only this in the back pocket. Back here, uh, my water bladder just blew out. Important to note, there's water treatment in here as well. Not a filter, but there's two more sets of Aquamira water treatment tabs in here for a total of 50 liters of water in this sustainment pouch. But in here, TP. Never know when you're gonna need TP. So I keep a full, row, uh, full roll squashed up in there and my three liter bladder that was in there has recently burst. It was a Coleman brand, which I've had scattered success with. So I will be going back with a Camelback in, in the back of that. So that is the totality of the web gear and the rucksack for the current bug out setup. All right, guys, I hope that helped somebody with something or at the very least gave you something entertaining to look at. I apologize for the camera work. It's weird lighting in here so one day when we're big and famous i'll have myself a nothing fancy reviewing table but until that time comes uh y'all get to hang out in bed with me you're welcome so i hope that helped and uh or at least gave you an idea of where my head's at when it comes to moving this body 200 miles uh upstream to arkla texahomas from the Babylon of the DFW Metroplex. And so, there's a few things that I'm heavy on, and I know I'm heavy on, and I talk to people all the time about what they carry, and I'm appalled that they're not heavy on. My water carrying capacity is five liters. I really think I'm gonna add a GI canteen to this kit as well. I don't know if it'll end up on the chest rig, although that's a good place for it, or if it'll end up on the rucksack or the belt line. The belt line is probably the best place for it. Put a one quart GI canteen on the belt line, and I am considering uh, putting together a Batman belt of just a few small basic things for my belt line, but the fact of the matter is I would never carry them in my daily life, but they'd be cool. But I'm big on water carrying capacity. I'm big on water purification and treatment. Um, I'm not bringing the Catadyne Hiker water filter, and I think that'll be okay. I'm betting my life on it, so it better be okay. So big on water, I'm big on calories, as you've seen. Uh, I have uh, 14 pounds of food, uh, not including granola bars and peanuts in that sustainment bag, so I'm probably closer to 17, 18 pounds of food. So that's 1.7, 1.8 pounds of food per day over 10 days with a goal of making 20 miles per day. Worst case scenario, if I have to go the entire distance on foot from here to the homestead in Arkla, Texas, You want to be on, for maintenance calories, well over a pound, ideally a pound and a half of food per person per day. And for sustainment, uh, or I'm sorry, 
what your body really needs is at least two pounds. So, especially when you're out there hoofing it, working, right? So I'm under two pounds. I'm 1.7, 1.8. So I'm in kind of in a sweet spot between um, having enough food and taking too much weight. So we'll call it 18 pounds of food for 10 days. It's pretty good. And that means that I can move without getting caught up in having to fish, having to hunt, having to trap. Now, if a target of opportunity comes along, awesome. But if it doesn't, I'll make it and not be so weak from malnutrition towards the end of my trip that I don't actually get there. Now, a strange phenomenon is that you're probably not going to get real hungry until day three to day five of overland rucking. But once you get hungry, you're going to get real hungry. So, you know, and I also keep, I'm pretty well schooled on wild edibles because my wife is a voodoo doctor, witch person. But I also keep this, uh, wild edibles, in the outside pocket of the rucksack so that if I'm not sure of what I'm looking at, I can at least refer to that and go, oh, I shouldn't eat that. It's going to make me uh, trip and possibly die of, uh, you know, a psychoactive reaction. Who knows? So I have that as well. So big on food, big on water, big on firepower. Um simply because I'm well aware of what human beings are capable of when they are backed up against a wall in really bad situations. I don't want to have to pull the trigger on anybody, but if I have to, I, it's kind of the same philosophy as my plate carrier. Three magazines? Three magazines? No thank you. There is no resupply one of the things we talk about often here. There is no resupply. Nobody is going to throw you a magazine when you run dry. So I have six plus one in the rifle, one in the rifle. So that's your standard basic combat loadout. And then I've got uh, two for the pistol, one in it and one spare. And why does the pistol exist? The pistol exists to fight your way to the long gun that you should have had in the first place or because the long gun has had a hard stoppage or has run dry and you can transition from your rifle to your pistol, which is something I train. You can go watch the uh, Summer Range Day uh, 2018 video. The last footage in there is me training two and twos, two from the rifle, two to the pistol, two from the rifle, two to the pistol, to get that the mechanics of that down and maintain the familiarity of it. So... Big on food, big on water, big on firepower. Uh, light on sleep system, admittedly. Got some first aid. And light on gadgets. I don't have a lot of gadgets. I don't want gadgets. I don't want uh, cutesy, artsy, fartsy, single taskers. Everything I have is a multitasker. It'll do more than one thing, right? So... I don't carry any fancy stuff. It's just all basic stuff. And there's... It's quantity, right? I have quality stuff, and I carry that quality stuff in quantity. Enough quantity to, to sustain me for the duration of the trip. That's my ideology behind it. It's, it's not fancy. It's just well thought out. So, I hope this helps you guys. Um, this is not the first time we've do dove into a bug out bag. Or even this bug out bag but I was just playing with it and uh, going back through it uh, moving things around and replenishing and I figured I would document the process for you guys so hope this helps and uh, shalom and blessings y'all peace